After a well-deserved six-week break, the boys started their arduous five-week journey of season preparation with medicals to see what shape they were in after the break and to see how many cobwebs would need to be cleaned out of the systems. We joined them in week two, the start of all the hard work at the Nguenyama Sports Facility in White River. The good thing is we didn't have many changes this year. We didn't bring a lot of players to fit into the tactical way we play. That's an advantage. The team has improved, I must say. Uh, but, you know, there's always a room for improvement, especially on the league, we came second, and second is not good enough. We are the team that needs to come first because we came first before. The boys look good, the response is good, the body mass and the fat percentages are, I would say, 98% very good. So in that space, I think we are happy. And they're responding well, they're working hard. You know, it's very difficult, but it's the preparation because you don't want to come to the season and you have not prepared well. But basically on off-season, you must always prepare yourself not to come back flat. I think that's the most important thing because pre-season is, is something the body doesn't get used to it. Even if you've been training, you feel it, you know. So if you rest completely, you feel it more. So mentally, you tell yourself, okay, when I'm off-season, I'm going to try try to keep myself fit so it doesn't become as hard as it should be. You tell yourself mentally, okay, I'm ready to suffer. I'm ready to feel my body. That's how I prepare it mentally on my side. A surprise just to make sure that to contribute to the team, to make sure that the, this season will play better and, and have a better season than last season. I think I'm settling in well. Obviously, it's going to take still a bit of time. It's good to meet new faces, and obviously it's always good to be playing with players like the like of Bongani Zungu, Teko Mudisi. So I guess I'm going to learn much more from them. So far, so good. Ntjabliga kulu, uglala, nabadla laba fana no surprise, no teko, no lafo. Jango bang kule ngwa pega, gisa kula from development, being pega ga kulu, mabie lala song, ntjabliga kulu ba, se timini eyo tona. This is my fourth season in Sundance. I won the, the league already with Sana, I won the NetBank Cup. It's an achievement on its own, you know, so I'm happy and I feel blessed to be playing for a big team like this, especially in, in Africa, not only in South Africa, you know, so I told myself that I'm not on any pressure, you know, I just need to work hard, concentrate and listen to what my coaches want me to do whenever I get a chance, make use out of it. And, I'm okay. It's not easy to stay in a big team and perform every game and every season you're expected to win something. It takes a lot out of you, so you actually have to be on your best in terms of everything. You know, you have to train well, you have to eat well, you have to behave like a Sundance player. It's part of growing, you know. If you want to grow, you have to, to exceed these limits, you have to pass them, you have to go beyond your comfort zone. The coaches were determined to take the players way beyond their comfort zones in an attempt to get the squad physically and mentally prepared for whatever this season might throw at them. We started low and now, now it's intensive, you know, but uh, we got a, a very good professional trainer, KB. I think he's doing well and uh, we train less, but the intensity is very high and I think everybody's coping. There's no room for complaint, you know, you just need to work harder and do what you think you can do, that's all. I'll be planning and preparing my own pre-season, but it's easy if you know what you're doing. If you prepare well, then it's going to be easy. So what is key for me is making sure that, uh, number one, the guys are ready for the season. Number two, zero percent injuries. You can't play for our team at this level and you still don't push hard because you know yourself that if you're not going to be in the team, the team is strong enough with a lot of personnel and quality that the team will win without you and you take time to get back. So you better be part of the team. You've got no choice. The guys are putting it in. You know, we have senior players in the team and when you see the likes of surprise, Tico Mudise, you know, running that hard and you look at yourself like these guys, they are older than me and still when they say let's run they run so like what more do you need to get motivated no it wasn't easy especially going in the gym you know doing things that uh, some of us it was our first time like me you know pushing that that iron you know I want to see that on TV seeing rugby guys doing it but I couldn't believe that uh, a professional soccer player was going to do that I'm glad that we went through that stage there was no injury there was no complaint and everybody did it the way he wanted us to do it it's not a rugby training session a rugby player has got quadriceps he's got hamstrings he's got calves so does a football and you all use the same muscle groups. What's the number one injury in football? It's the hamstrings, so you have to prepare them. Yeah, it was a heavy session. It was expected because uh, this time of the season, you have to push the body to extreme so that when the season starts, you are ready because this is the only time where you can really make sure that you put more effort because as soon as the game starts, as soon as the league starts, 
you don't have much time to work on the body. You just take it to another level that you never thought you, you can actually go. At times I felt like giving up, but I was like, you know, I can't give up. In a football match, when things are going bad, do you give up, do you keep on going? But if you decide to give up, that makes you a loser. So it tests you, it makes you grow, it makes you take pain. So it's one of those sessions where I was like, yeah, it's a once-off session. I'm not going to do it every week. So let me just push, even though I'm running out of steam, but I just kept on pushing. I had to do that in order for them to realize their baseline, to break through their pain threshold. It was more of a mental training. It was good for mental strength because the games are going to be coming thick and fast. And if the body is OK and it's right, it's going to help. And the only way to prepare it is to go through sessions like those. All this energy and effort that we put in uh, are going to help us at the end of the season. So there is no room for complaint. We just need to enjoy training. It's our job. We choose to do it. So we're enjoying it. A new addition to this year's preseason camp was the introduction of team building sessions that challenged the players to work together in different teams and to think out the proverbial box. Yeah, the team building, it's brotherhood, it's camaraderie unity, principles of working together to achieve one common goal outside football. The team buildings are always important and they refresh the team in a social way. It brings also social cohesion, so they are very important. You can see the other side of the players where the, the creativity and to see that some guys like Lafo can draw. It, it, it's amazing to know that side of him because we always play football. You don't have time to check whether someone can draw. I was surprised with Mshishi. Mshishi is known for just making jokes. But the thinking he put in our team in the first game, that's why we won, you know, it was amazing. You know, he's streetwise. It, it's a wonderful thing. It brings us together as a team and we laugh and we just forget about football for a while. Temba Zwani's smarts might have brought victory to his team, but how far did the collective experience of Modise, Lafour, Mahashi and Kekana get them in Team Moriri? <laughs> hey, <man. laughs> I, I thought maybe we're not going to ask. We took the last position because um, I think we were a little bit slow. We had Lafo in our team, and, and you can understand it's, it's a little bit taller. It takes time to go down to get the tire and the plank. So it, we can take last position for now, but we are planning on working hard on the team building so that when the week finishes, we are on top position. It's also good because you see how players think and uh, you see all these structures that we have built with the spaghetti and the marshmallows. You see other people eating marshmallows because the marshmallows is in front of them and it's very difficult to resist. <laughs> Whereas you need the marshmallows to give you the height. I remember the last piece we had on the marshmallow on top was, was a marshmallow beaten in half. I don't know a strategy to have it not too heavy at the top or somebody decided that, no man, you know, I've been looking at this marshmallow. I think maybe I should take a bite on it. Yeah, you can see that some of us, we don't have the basics when it comes to building, because if, if we start building houses, even Carlton Center will fall, even before it gets to second floor. <laughs> I think it's, it's very important to have those kind of things, because it gets your mind off the hard work. Because if you, you just work and you go lay in bed, it became boring and it, you feel it even more. I think it's important to do those band balls, you know. Things like that will get your head off the hard work. And when you come in, you are focused again and ready to work. The paintball. It's also soccer related because now you need to strategize, you need to put tactics in it. You know, there was a flag in the middle that you guys had to go get and go to the other side. So you guys as a team, you needed to strategize to overcome the opponent. So I think that helped us also to get to know each other because now we're in groups, in different groups. It helped us to know the other guys' qualities, you know. So yeah, it helped us a lot because you were different characters in the team. You'll always get something out of the team building thing which relates to the game. You'll always have those players who take initiative on the team building game and you'll find that they're nearly the same people who take leadership on the pitch. But also there are people who don't take so much leadership and not on the forefront on the pitch, but they have the brains to give a direction, leading quietly. You also see them when they're doing the team building exercises, quietly giving strategies, say, you know, I think we should go in this direction. On that drill we did, what's most important is to build the base, the foundation, and if the foundation the foundation in the base of the tower is strong, then you can go high up. It's also the same. This is what we're doing now. We're training, we're building the foundation and the base and getting the structure of the team. 
tactically and physically to sustain the season. Then you can finish as high as possible. A good thing about this preseason game is everybody's taking part in it, you know, not only the players, even the technical staff. And it's good because if people work that out, it brings success to the team. And I just want to say a very big thank you to everybody that are going to go in this program. And I think at the end of the season, we all going to smile because in Sanders, we work as a group now. Like what I'm seeing now, I think we're going to go for. Look, the plan at Sundowns is always one. We want to win games and go to finals and win cups. That's what we're here for because uh, being number two is not enough. So that's why we have to push extra hard, try to give our best every game. We don't want to be number two because we know what number two means to us. We want to be number one. We want to be champions.